didn't see where it was. There's, like I said, it's a lot of information right. in a short time. If All right. I, any comments or questions for Mike before we discuss the, the issue? Yeah, David. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in looking at, and I think the question really to us concerns the $30 million, I was trying to identify any written uh, documents that uh, was presented to the voters prior to the election that broke down the $777 million for the total program by project. And the only thing I could find was on the website how it broke down the, uh, the cost by projects. Do you or Mr. McDaniels or uh, Mr. Adams, do you know of a document that shows how the uh, projects were b broken down by cost at the time the information was presented to the voters? The instructions that we were given when we started were to use $250 million for the convention center. We've been consistent with that since December of last year. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I am not familiar with all of the documents. That yeah, Mike was not even made. hired during the campaign. It was okay. a year afterwards. Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's any, uh, Eric? I'm only aware of one document. It's a yellow and white flyer that's on the city's website that was a part of the pre-campaign materials. I'm not aware of any other documents that were released from the city other than just that one. Well, could you tell me how much was set aside or identified for the convention center in that document? So in that document, it prescribed 280. That's what I've seen. So I just wanted to clarify what was presented to the voters as far as the amount. For each project. I think the one thing I'd like to add with that is obviously each of the projects, as you get into the details though, I mean those were just single figures that were assigned to each of the projects. There's several components individually underneath the eight major projects as we talk about different wellness centers and different phases and things, but obviously none of those details were provided early in the process. Those are what are coming out to us today. I understand. I'm just making a point that I think it's important that if we presented something to the voters that we should follow through with that. Yeah. Thank you. Mayor. Okay. Yeah, let's skip and then pick. Okay, excuse me. With that, uh, there was a, a, a location that was pretty much, uh, for all practical purposes, identified as the location site for the convention center. And, and wasn't the, the substation, wasn't it part of the issue of the $30 million that was necessary for uh, the removal of that. Yes, yeah, it's my understanding that the answer is yes, that the original $30 million was budgeted for the substation relocation costs, but as for the actual location of the convention center, I think that we had always envisioned that there was going to be a study determined best location. That just was one of those options. Okay. All right. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. That's right. He said what I was going to say. Okay. Any other comments or questions for either of these two? Just a brief comment. Uh -huh. On any of the construction projects you've ever been associated with, has anybody at the end of the day said, hell, we made it too big? <laughs> <laughs> I've done several projects. I've never heard that comment that at the end of the day, we should have made it smaller. It's always been just the opposite. We should have made it bigger. And I think that's an important point to consider as we go forward. This is not going to be a, a, a repetitive process. Every year we can stretch it a little bit. We need to make it as big as we can initially and go forward. Okay. Mayor. Yes. I, I agree with Pat. I just don't think we ought to make a decision on the front end that we only make one project larger. The same, that, that, that argument holds true for every project on the list. And, I, and, and as a result, I have a, I have a, uh, I'm going to move the, uh, uh, B, I'm going to move uh, version B with an amendment. And I have an amendment prepared and I'm going to pass it out. Okay. You know, before we get into the motion phase, can we have a little bit more general discussion sure. Certainly. On, on the various options? Uh, I, I just, I, I feel that uh, the information we gave the voters was a $280 million convention center project. There was no project in there that listed $30 million discretionary fund for the city council to spend however we wanted. I think we only have two honorable choices, is that is to spend it on the convention center or give it back to the voters. We end MAPS three months early and they get their $30 million back because we didn't need it for the convention center as we intended. To, to spend it on other projects to me is, 
is disingenuous and it chips away at the public's trust in our city council. Meg? Well, I think I respectfully disagree with that, Councilman. I think we have a very valid option to consider putting it in a contingency right now, given that I don't think we have all the facts available. My recollection is that we very clearly specified $250 million for the convention center, and that was in lots of conversation with the chamber and the other parties that were involved in helping us frame some of these projects, and that the $30 million was clearly identified as being required to move the substation. The voters voted for the total package of $777 million, and we have a firm obligation to meet all of the standards and the projects that we submitted to the voters. But I just don't feel at this moment in time that we have enough information in front of us to decide how those dollars should be spent. They very well may need to be spent on the convention center. We may discover things in the course of developing that site that require that some of that money go there. But we don't know that yet. And as I've been thinking about this, I think a little bit about our personal budgets. If somebody were to hand you an extra $10,000 in your annual budget, you certainly would find a way to spend it very, very quickly. And we don't know what that need is yet. And I believe that we have some very specific things that need to be done with regard to the transmission lines that will affect the park. I believe that there are some wonderful options available to potentially wrap that substation, whether it's using decorative stone, as the city manager recommended. I've actually, a couple of years ago, approached both OG&E and Hans Boutser, who's a local architect, for some ideas of things that have been done internationally. And there are ways to wrap substations with netting and LED lights that turn them into pieces of artwork. We might be able to do something iconic that we could use around the city. So I find myself today in a position of simply feeling like I don't have enough information to make the best decision for all of the projects involved and think from a fiduciary responsibility and for the trust of the citizens that we ought to place that money in contingency until we have more information. But it was not presented to the voters as a contingency fund. If we don't relocate the substation, and that was clearly what it was intended to be, and your asterisk, and I'm always suspicious of asterisks because the print gets very small, but the $30 million was set out for a specific purpose, relocate the substation. If we don't have to relocate the substation for the convention center, we either spend it on the convention center or we give it back to the voters. I don't think we have the right to hold it back so if we have an overrun in streetcars or the river, we spend it someplace else. I mean, I think that $30 million was intended to be associated with the convention center. Now, it was intended to be a specific site. I'll agree with that. But once we decided we were going to move that site, move the site of the convention center, we had no need to relocate the substation. That money ought to go to the convention center or we ought to give it back to the voters by any maps three months early. I realize that may take a lot of the people to do that, but we've got lots of elections between now and the time that we have to make that decision. I would agree with Pat that if we don't use it for the 280, if that truly was, and I'm still not convinced, but that's all the information I've seen, that $280 million was the figure given to the public prior to the election, that we need to honor that statement or terminate the sales tax early enough to where we can refund or not take in the $30 million. At this point, I don't see a need to relocate the substation. I was over there this weekend, took plenty of pictures, and I'd be happy to share them with you all. I see the problem, two main power lines going east to west, and if they could either be placed underground or somehow relocated, I think that's the only issue with respect to that substation in my opinion. For example, Early Wine Park, which I use, many of our friends use all the time, has power lines running along May Avenue on the side of the park. Now, this is on the east side of Robinson, not along the side of the park as far as the transmission lines. Early Wine also has power lines on the 
north side of the park along the uh, line where the houses uh, are adjacent to it, as well along uh, 119th Street on the south side. Nobody has ever talked to me and said, boy, I wish we could take these power lines down. They just have become, uh, you know, not noticeable. It's kind of like when we were in high school, you know, if we had a blemish developed on our face, to us it's a big deal, but to everyone else it's probably not that noticeable. I think it's the same thing right now. We're focusing way too much on this uh, substation, and I think with just a little bit of effort we can conceal it to the point to where people don't even recognize the fact that we have a substation there or that it's a problem. So if we're going to pull away $30 million from this project as it was presented to the public, then I agree with Pat. We ought to return the money and terminate the uh, uh, sales tax uh, early enough to uh, to where we would only collect 747 million instead of 777 million. Thank you. Over here, Larry. Uh, I, I realize everybody has their own personal perspective on this, and, and I'm going to share mine. Uh, when the when the maps three proposals were developed, and when the material was presented. And we were uh, either in favor of it or not in favor of it as a council. I happened to be in favor of it. Uh, I went out on a number of occasions and gave talks um, on the importance of MAPS 3 and how it was needed. Uh, I gave uh, talks on the importance of all projects within there. Although I happen to have a favorite project, my favorite project happens to be the White River rafting portion of it. But uh, the convention center was a part of it. I wholly endorsed it. And I told people that the amount of money that would be budgeted for that project was $280 million. And uh, I believe I'm personally committed to support whatever effort comes up to make sure that the $280 million is allocated to the convention center. If the decision is made not to, then I concur that we should just give the other $30 million back. But personally for me, uh, I have to support the $280 million because that's what I said to the voters, and I want my trust to be, uh, to be kept intact. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Yeah, Ed? Here's a couple of things that we can learn contrasting this with the original maps. And, and, and from that experience, we had an entire mayor's election basically decided between Guy Liebman and Kirk Humphreys over sh shortfalls on the arena, with Guy Liebman wanting to indefinitely delay the arena. I think. This has come up over and over. I think the fiscally conservative option is to keep money back and, and look for the unknowns, as Meg was saying. You're going to have environmental abatement issues, water table issues that are just not known at this time. Um, and so learning from previous experiences, I think the fiscally conservative approach is to, is to wait and see what unknowns come. I think the other lesson is that clearly this, this log rolling, this lumping eight different projects together is inferior to the, the way we did it originally and having specific line items for the taxpayer so they know exactly what they're getting and we don't have this kind of confusion later. I think the idea that somehow the $280 million was presented to the, to the voter and that's some kind of bond with the voter is a, a little bit disingenuous. And, and, and I think the reason is that, number one, there were other things promised. We promised 57 miles of trails, for example, and we're only going to deliver 32 miles now. <clears throat> we had pictures of the convention center on the Quarter Shore South Park. Uh, and so if we're look, just looking at literature, uh, I think that uh, that would be problematic. Any Google Earth you know, search of that, of that site would show us a large substation on Southwest 4th and Robinson. And I think this also goes to the issue that we've talked about in, in previous meetings, that we had two studies that we relied on for this. Is, uh, convention Center is more than a third of MAPS 3, and we relied on two different studies that were not commissioned by the city and were not available to the voters. And that presents a problem when we're talking about a bond with the voters. We have the Convention Sports and Leisure Study, which was, to this day, has been withheld from the public, has not been released to the public. We have the HOK Study, which used $250 million as the amount that, that we needed for, I mean, that's, $250 million wasn't pulled out of a hat. We had a study, the HOK Study, that said $250 million. That's where that number came from. Uh, so, if that, if that had been released to the public, I think that this would be less confusing today. The uh, site locations issued in the HOK study would have been vetted. Uh, 
the elephant in the room of this, this, we have this other issue of a convention center hotel, which the Convention Sports and Leisure Study, which if it had been released to the public, would have let the public know you can't, the convention center is not viable, at least according to this, this study, without a hotel, and the public's going to have to come up with an additional $50 million for <clears throat> a hotel. The public did not know that at the time they voted on MAPS 3. They didn't know about the substation or the convention center hotel. And both of those should have been vetted. I, I, I do take, in August of 2009, OG&E made a presentation on what the substation relocation would cost. It wasn't $30 million. It was, it was between a low of $70 million and a high of $100 million. That, that's available to anyone through an open records request. It's freely available, and, and some journalists have it. But that's, that's what four months before the election was, was the bid from og &E. It was somewhere between 70 and 100 million for relocating the substation. If the public was, was aware of that, I think it, we would have had a thorough vetting over the ensuing four months. Now, subsequently, the city uh, intensely ne negotiated with og &E and that number plummeted. But in August of 2009, the number was not 30 million. I think that uh, if transit, if it was not the convention center, if transit, if you had some other, say that, say that you, you needed a $130 million maintenance facility for it to be viable and the public was going to have to come up with $50 million, uh, I think we, we'd be talking about, uh, I don't think that would fly. Finally, I would say if it's, if it's in contingency, that, that would give us, I mean, we're talking about the voters and the taxpayers and what they want. Let's ask them. I mean, I know, let's do, let's do polling. I mean, I know that that's not the way you run a government. This is a representative democracy. You can't do it on every issue. But let's ask them what they want. Let's poll 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 voters and ask them, now that we have this 25, uh, 25 million, what, what do you think we should do with it? Now, if, it's, if the polling numbers come back, 55, 45, or even 60, 40, that would be one thing. But let's say the numbers come back 80, 20, or 90, 10. I think it would be hard to ignore that kind of large feeling among the public and the taxpayer. If we're concerned about a bond with the taxpayer, let's ask them. Right now, let's do polling. The convention center polled at 27% approval before MAPS 3, as low as 8% in wards like Ward 3 with 92% disapproval. So that's before the public knew about the substation. That's before the public knew that they were going to have to come up with an ad additional $50 million for a hotel. Let's ask them now that they know those two additional things where they would uh, allocate the money. Thank you. All right. Pete? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, some of the things that were with these other ideas of what we could do uh, are all interesting. I don't think we can do any of them today, though. I think the only way to preserve our ability to, to be that flexible is to place the money in contingency. Uh, and that's the substance of my motion. It, um, it places the money in contingency, it leaves all these options, Councilman Shadid's option, Councilman Ryan's option, all those options are still left open to us. We haven't spent the money, we haven't done anything. The only, the only thing that is to be done with the contingency money is, is this, this resolution ask that we immediately undertake to develop an innovative plan to minimize the adverse impact of the substation and the power lines on the park. That's it. That's all it asks for. It doesn't ask for the spending of the money, just to come up with some innovative ideas about what we can do. Um, and I would renew my motion to uh, adopt B, subject to the resolution that each of you have been handed. Thank you, Gary. Uh, I don't know where to start. Um, having, being the council representative on the MAPS advisory board has put me in all the meetings of all these uh, projects. And, and believe me, I've heard every version of every project. I'm sure Jim Couch kept looking at me as he was going through his explanation because I don't think, when he says he didn't, he didn't know it was going to come this way or this quick. That's, he's probably blaming me for that because I sit in the convention center subcommittee when they were debating this issue. And when asked my 
my opinion. What I told them was that that if they felt that that was part of their budget, they simply needed to move that on as a recommendation to the advisory board and that the advisory board would take that on and then they would vote it yes or no that it's part of the convention center budget and they'd move it on to council. I said, you've got to get this in front of the policy makers. I knew the $30 million issue was not going to go away just by deferring this longer and longer and longer. And I said, you know, it, Lord knows that committee had enough uh, bullseyes on it anyway, targets, that it, it didn't need any more. It simply needed to make its recommendation and move it on and let this policy-making board decide what they wanted to do with it. So that's why you're dealing with it today in the format that it's in. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to support option A, but I want, I want to talk a little bit about why first. The, um, I don't know of any projects that, that, that I've ever seen done by the city that had a budgeted amount put into it that covered everything, it covered land purchase, covered utility relocations, it covered you know, whatever it might be, we think there's an oil well underneath there, we're going to have to move, whatever it may be, and then before you ever got to the point where you started doing drawings and you found out one of those things wasn't needed, that you jerk money out of the budget without ever finishing that project to see if you did need it. That's why I think it's important to keep this in there. Who knows whether the, the site selected for the convention center doesn't need $30 million for whatever they're going to find underneath the ground. We don't know that. You're right. We don't have enough information. But I don't know of any other time that we jerked a, a budget out. Let me give you a couple of examples. You mentioned transit. $10 million was put in there at the last minute, just like the $30 million was, for the, for the hub. We now have a consultant saying they don't think it's going to take $10 million. It's going to take $6 million. The Transit Committee spent a lot of time in their last meeting discussing, hoping that the council would not take the, the money away from them and leave it in the transit budget because they don't know what it's going to be, what it might be needed for. So if you do this to the Convention Center subcommittee, are you going to do pull $4 million out of the transit? Because they only need $6 million for the hub now. That's what the consultant has said, whatever that may be. The senior centers. There's been some discussion by some of the proposed or the people that might be interested in partnering with us that they might be willing to donate land that they have already or that might be in conjunction with property they have or whatever. So are you going to pull money out of the senior centers now when you think you might not need it and move it over? I don't think so. You're going to leave it in there. Uh, it, it's, um, now, having said all of that, I'm going to tell you that, that however this vote goes today, I'm going to smile when I walk out of here because we're going to build these projects and we're going to build them the best way we can and they're going to be great projects. All of them are. But the thing that concerns me about the um, pulling of this out of the convention center now, I understand the concept of, of pulling it out, putting a contingency, and if we need it later, it might be available, might not, who knows. But the problem I have with pulling it out now is we've already, uh, the, the project has already been um, lowered from what the original concept of why we needed a new convention center and what it was going to be. When you look at the amenities and you look at the square footage and you look at the reasoning for why we needed a new convention center, if we could... If you pull the $30 million out and the architect and the engineers can still look at the scope of the project and the amenities and not say, yeah, but we're dealing with this amount versus this amount, then I'm okay with letting them design and bring it back to us and see what it is. And if we need more money, pull it out of contingency and do it, whatever. But the, sitting on the Convention and Visitors Commission, I can tell you that the uh, that the convention, the need for a new convention center is not wholly about um, just needing a new convention center. 
It's not just about getting new conventions. It's about the fact that our current convention center will continue to lose even the ones that we can host now because we don't have things like ceiling heights. We don't have the new technology that everybody needs. If we don't keep up in the market for what you need as a convention center, using that scope, that, 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 that study that was done to give us what we want in a new convention center, if we down, if we tell them you don't have as much money so you're just, just designed to what dollar amount sitting in the budget, then I don't think we're going to reach that concept of what the scope was in the, in the convention center when we talked about what it would take to, to not only get new ones, but to keep the ones that we have. So I'm a little concerned that, that the scope will not be designed as such. But I'll go back and say again, having said all of that, I don't know that any of these are killers. They're, they're certainly not going to provide death to anybody. But I just find it strange that we want to pick and choose when we use the arguments of contingency, leave it in the budget, uh, we might need it for that particular project later on. Uh, and I do have a little bit of sense of, um, uh, of, of the fact that the, uh, all of the documents when we were going around talking about MAPS 3 said $280 million for the convention center. And yes, the, the substation, I wholeheartedly agree, was put in at the last, 30 million was put in at the last minute for the OGE e substation. But to me, that wasn't any difference than saying, oh my God, we think there might be an oil well underneath it, so we need to add that. And then later on, we found out, well, there really wasn't one, so we don't need the money for it. Are you going to pull it back out? To me, it's, it's, it's the same concept. And I don't know that we've done that with any projects. Certainly none that I remember aware of in my years with the city. So. Your Honor. All right. Yeah, Pat? Just a quick comment on contingency funds. I'd like to, to, to reiterate a point that was made earlier. Each of these projects in and of itself contains contingency money, including the park. And I'm not sure what the total is, but I would guess around $5 million of contingencies for the park project. In addition to that, there's a $17 million infrastructure uh, contingency fund available to help with those sort of things. So we've got contingency money here before we have to we do anything with the, the $30 million. It's not like we, we had a bare bones budget with no contingency dollars to set aside for it. Each of the budgets that was de were developed, budgets were developed, yes, uh, included contingency money. And so uh, how much contingency money do you need? They made an estimate of what was a, a reasonable number for contingencies, and it's in there. $17 million set aside separately as contingency money, and we didn't have any contingency money, as I recall, in MAPS 1. That's right. And so I think we're in good shape as far as contingency without looking at this $30 million. Okay. Any other comments, Meg? Well, I just might um, add to that that uh, as I've wrestled with making this decision and trying to decide what I think is the most prudent financial decision for the city. Um, I've drawn a lot on our experience with the Sports Facilities Oversight Trust. And, and that's an example, you know, I think the citizens remember that that was a very unusual situation. We voted to extend that penny sales tax for a very short period of time, just that 15 months. And that practically the day we voted was the day we went into a recession. And where we thought we were going to collect $120 million to complete the two projects, at the end of the day we collected about 108. Um, that required that we go back and re-engineer the entire project. It's cost us more than a year delay in time to get the projects built. And although they will be built to a very high quality standard, um, we, had to, we had to reach very deeply into contingencies and other things to make sure that happened. And we're now looking at a seven year, nine month project, $777 million. We happen to be in an enviable economic climate right at this minute and sales tax collections are strong but we have no way to know over the course of this next cycle i think what we do know is that we're going to go through some ups and downs and to preserve um, the funds that were set aside for a, a reason that we don't need right now to me seems like it makes the most sense and gary i thought your discussion was great but i felt like you defined exactly the definition of contingency and why we have it and why we need it um, and I guess my last point would be that the, that the study that was done um, and, and was referenced when we um, decided on the options for the convention center, because we actually were presented with two options, if I recall correctly, a, a smaller footprint and then a much larger footprint. 
one of which was $250 million and one of which was maybe as much as $475 million. And we opted to go with the smaller version to start with, with the opportunity to expand in the future if we needed to. But that number that was suggested by the consultants was $250 million. It was not $280 million. Okay. I think Fannie is here to speak. She has signed up. Fannie, you want to take the microphone? Is there anyone else here in the room that uh, would like to speak? Okay, we have uh, several people. All right. Fannie, why don't you lead us off? I will ask you to keep your comments to three minutes or less, and we'll need your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Fannie Bates. My address is 1116 Northwest 27th Street. Um, <clears throat> the people of Oklahoma City never wanted a convention center. This Bill, MAPS 3 was specifically designed to give us things that they knew we wanted and trick us into voting for a convention center that we didn't want. What we wanted, one of the things that we wanted and one of the things you could give us out of this is at least some rail. We have a line that the, that the city owns from 10th Street, from Douglas High School to the zoo, which could be made operable for about half a million dollars and it could be running on weekends and early in the morning and late at night and getting people to the zoo and back. New rail costs one-tenth of what new highways cost. One-tenth. We also have a line that goes to Tinker Air Force Base. You could put some of that money into, I'm talking about rehabilitating these lines. You can rehabilitate those two lines, and that would be something that's real, that's a part of our history and part of our future, something we would be proud of, because it, it's representative of who we really are. And I want to thank Tom Elmore for giving me information on that, because he is, has an encyclopedic knowledge of rail in Oklahoma, uh, probably more than anybody else in the state. Uh, and we all have talked about that t Oklahoma City is the tornado capital of the world. Cities all over the United States give people a list of shelters they can go to in case of a tornado. Oklahoma City doesn't do that. Oklahoma City doesn't do anything but scrape up our bodies after a tornado kills us. Some of this money could be used to beef up buildings we already have to make them shelters and then mark them as shelters. It wouldn't cost that much. Find buildings, there are abandoned buildings that have good shelters underneath them that are full, full size basements. They could be turned into a shelter for a small amount of money and marked and people could be given a list of those. Fanny, could you wrap, wrap up your comments? At Wildwood uh, Community, that's a predominantly black community and they, um, they are not allowed to go to that shelter there. The shelter is safe for the white people that work at the zoo, the predominantly white people that, that work at the zoo. Those people at Wildwood have lived in that community for 30 or 40 years, and they're told they cannot go to the shelter in their own community, even though they've been paying taxes for decades and decades. Fanny, I'm being reminded that you've got to stay on topic here for what we're discussing this today. This is I mean, the we, topic. Well, we the topic is that... Fanny, Fanny. We have opportunities at the end of the meeting for general comments to council. These are not general comments. This is talking about what we want. This money should be spent on what we want and not on what the Humphreys want. I'll give you another 15 seconds if you'd like to finish up. All right. Anyone else has signed up to speak on this item? Yes, I think some ladies want to talk about sidewalk and trails. All right. Uh, Katie LaHue. Hello. Um, uh, Katie, I will need your name and address for the record. Oh, Katie LaHue, or 515 Northwest. And, and I'm Street. somewhat are, are you here to speak on the item that we're discussing, or were you? Are you yes. Here, it says here item 12, and we're on item 8. So is that just a miscommunication on your sheet? I didn't write number 12 on there. Someone yeah, it says item 12, which would be items from council, which is more for general comments from citizens. Oh, okay. I can wait. Well, you don't need to wait if you're talking about the item that we're discussing, about the $30 million and the, and the convention center budget and those types of issues. Is that what you wanted to speak on? And more so towards, like, the running trails. Okay. Well, why don't you wait till the end of the meeting, okay. and, we'll, and we'll give you a chance to okay. talk there. And, and it looks as if the other two people that have come are similar mode. They've, they've also signed up for item 12. 
All right, is anyone here wishing to speak on the item that we're considering? Yeah, Joshua, come on up. Uh, all right. Um, in in uh, just similarity to what the previous person said, when I was here a few months ago, I was under the impression that the voters did not support the convention center like the other MAPS projects and that um, this wouldn't pass a referendum if it were put to the vote. And um, again, also that after it was put to a vote, what I saw the process going on um, as was just that the convention center pushed these studies to, to really get all the funding directed from the projects that the public did support, transit and health care which arguably would be better at job creation and serving the public interest um, and really just picked all the funding for itself and we pushed this through without really having it examined and the public never really saw it and that it's not so much about what the, the funding is for the it's not so much about changing the funding because we can always spend another 30 million dollars on on it if we need it as far as the the convention center, but it was the timeline that was actually changed and that we bumped it up at the expense of the other projects. And again, that was a timeline that was never never presented to the voters. We changed that last minute. And then uh, David Orr recently said in the Gazette, it's hard not to see this whole sordid affair as a cynical textbook case of bundling and bait and switch, package the expensive unpopular project with ones people are enthusiastic about, all within an inferred timeline, then do the bidding of the ruling class in town once you get the vote. We were also told a, a month or so ago that this could be deferred, the vote, and then when two members were gone, it was put to the vote and everything's being pushed through so fast. I mean, why do we need to push it through so fast? This timeline is getting changed. Again, uh, the voters support the transit. They support the health care. I don't see the support for the convention center. Right. Uh, Thanks, Joshua. Appreciate it. Anyone else here wishing to speak on this item? All right. More comments from council? I'm assuming you've had five minutes to think more about it and have new things to offer. I'm wrong. All right. Well, We're look, looking for a second then on Pete's motion. Who, who made the second? Okay, Meg made the, the second on the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any more comments or questions before we vote? Yeah, Gary? Excuse me. L, to move item L2 with the attached resolution that I sent you. So it's version B as amended. Yeah, version B as amended. Excuse me. Your Honor, mm -hmm. Pete, may I ask you to just quickly explain your amendment the 30 million instead of going towards infrastructure would be dedicated solely to a contingency fund is that correct it moves the 30 million that was designed to move the substation into contingency uh, with a, uh, to be earmarked for um, uh, infrastructure needs in the park I'm sorry it's same thing, yeah. That doesn't your amendment restrict it to the park use? No. 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 It, it instructs the subcommittee, subcommittees involved, and the advisory board to begin negotiations and fact seeking on addressing the OGE power line issue uh, with the money available, then the council would have the opportunity to address those needs once they determine what they are. So yeah, it doesn't really have anything to do with the $30 million? What's that? It doesn't have anything to do with the $30 million then. But if all it does is tell somebody to go out and do a design, there's, the $30 million is not related to that project. So the amendment's interesting, but I don't think it really bears on uh, what we're talking about. Oh, it seems to me it gives direction to staff. It, it yeah. seems to me that it, it determines that the $30 million will go into the contingency fund and that we are asking staff and the advisory board and the subcommittee that's involved 
to start the process of looking at what it would cost to wrap the substation and remove the lines that would affect the park. But it, it, there's not really, we do that, and I think uh -huh. that's important, but we shouldn't tie it to the $30 million. Well, I think we are tying it to the $30 million. I think so we are, that's, too, and that's, that's, that's the point. me a little bit. Okay, well, I understand you may not be for this, but I, I think, think that's think what they, it does. They really relate. We can do this final uh, resolve without having to talk about the $30 million at all. Because there is contingency money in the park fund, there's contingency money in the general fund, that if, if somebody decides that it's important to relocate transmission lines to shield the substation, mm -hmm. then there's contingency money available to do that. We don't have to have to put it I think if this motion fails, then we can entertain that idea. Yeah. All right. Yeah, David. Your Honor, I'm sorry. I don't mean to belabor the point, but I don't see where it says that $30 million will be placed in a contingency fund. It's just version B. It's Excuse me. It's version B of the resolution, version B, which basically would put the $30 million in an infrastructure budget. He's taking version B and modifying it say, and saying it's going in contingency, but it specifically says that the MAPS 3 Citizens Advisory and the Park Subcommittee should develop an innovative plan to minimize the impacts of the substation and the overhead power lines on the development and the use of the MAPS 3 Park. Your Honor, question. Yeah, Am yeah. I the only one? Uh, I just received this a few minutes ago. Did, did anybody get this before the meeting? This is all, all brand new, and I'm not in a position to even, even uh, you know, simulate it right now. I think the, the honorable thing to do, quite frankly, is to vote on uh, option A, and if that fails, then consider this at a later time. But I think the, if I understand it correct, option A, Jim, was the recommendation that the uh, Citizens uh, Advisory Committee recommended upon the recommendation of the subcommittee? Yes, sir. And I think we should vote on that first. Okay. Sorry, motion. I've already recognized the motion in the second to vote on item B. I understand your point. It was made and seconded. I think we've got to dispose of it before we can do something else. All right. We're voting on um, 8L2, version B, as amended. As amended. Ready to go? Right. Cast your votes. The item fails 4 to 5. Oh, sorry. Okay. The item passes. Five to four. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Your Honor. Yes, David. Excuse me. And I apologize, and I'm going to claim my newness to the council, but, uh, and I know we voted on it, so it's not anything that we're going to change, but I read it as a 30 million going into an infrastructure budget, and that's the same as a contingency fund? Basically what this does is it, you adopt it version B, it goes in the infrastructure budget, but you directed staff uh, and the Citizens Advisory Board and the Mar MAPS 3 Park Subcommittee to develop a plan to minimize the adverse in impact the substation and the power lines on the development of the and use of the uh, downtown public park with such plan to be implemented from the 30 million infrastructure budget. So it's it's in. David, a, if, if I could, in layman's terms, what that says is you you voted for the original proposal that was put forward and 250 for convention and adding the 30 million into contingency, and you put a task on them that they had to create a another project of moving the lines and doing something with the og &E substation out of the contingency that you just created with the 30 million it's specific. It'll come from the 30 million. yes thank you and i apologize for being slow all right on item 8m understand we do not need executive session on this item do not all right.